if you own a car, the car is keeping you really, really poor. Four topics I want to talk about in this video. First topic is the government actually forced you to own a car. So it's actually the government's fault that you are poor. Second topic is how much you can afford to buy the car, right? How much you need to make and what is the percentage of income for you to buy a 30,000 car or 40,000 car. That's a calculation. Third, how much car depreciate in value in first year and how much it depreciate in three years. Astounding numbers when I did the research. And fourth, why only a car is a trap will make you stress out, right? First thing I want to talk about is the topic is the government, right? How do we get here today that every single American own a car? Well, if you look in the history, uh, around 1950, right? Um, and, uh, the, uh, the president, Eisenhower, created the interstate highway system, right? The highway system that was funded by who? By the uh, automotive industries, by the lobbies, people, and by our tax money. It created, uh, it cost $24 billion at that time for the funding of building the highway system. And today's money is $250 billion. That uh, project in 1950 made long, long distance travel much, much convenient. Back then, railroad was the convenient way to travel, right? Imagine traveling just using like one buy a ticket and you can go to the next town in two or three dollars, right? You don't need a car. But the government decided not to focus on railroad anymore. Back then, we are number one in the world. But later on, the government and somehow decided, let's build a highway, right? Highway, you need cars. So they promoted a lot of policies to uh, manufacturers, right? To give them subsidies, right? And people will buy cars. And they build, uh, they, they build a lot of propaganda, right? The only a car is only your freedom. But there's a lot of costs associated with it. And that decision, that specific period of time, building that interstate highway system by Eisenhower influence how we live today. Everyone have to own a car. Going to Walmart, going to school, going to the doctor's appointment it is not the case in China or in South Korea. They have great public transportation system. Like I was living in China, right? I don't even need a car to go to school. I just walk to school because everything, everything is built so close together, right? Because in China, they build the business district and the home district all together. But in America, they divide it up. They have the business district in one section and the home district in one section. Since they have the road highway system, they made the car, you have to get a car now to travel to different locations, which is not good, right? And also government also um, subsidize for the oil production to keep the car price low. And they just continue promoting it. And the US government wants everyone to own a car. And look at today, average household, everyone owns two cars. And I'm gonna get into why only a car it's bad for you, right? Second topic I want to talk about is, um, before I get into topic, why owning a car is bad for you, second topic I want to talk about is, if you think about owning a car, how much can you actually like afford? Well, the, the magic, magic number is 35% of your annual gross income. So if you make $100,000, you can only afford a $35,000 car. If you make $90,000 and you buy a $50,000 car, you are in trouble. You're going to be paying $800 in more, a monthly payment. Since you still owe the money, you have to buy, buy the premium insurance, which is $250. So that's the mistake I made. I bought a Tesla Model Y. It was like $47,000, right? And I had to buy the premium insurance, which is $250. $250. 
and on top of the mortgage i'm paying nine to one thousand dollars a month because why back then eisenhower promoted the interstate highway system now i had to get a car and all the decisions the government government made in the past forced me to get a car granted i don't need a nice car like a tesla but the thing is tesla is electric it saved me on gas money that's the only reason i got it but i kind of regret it now because the insurance is a bit too expensive right so you gotta really do your math here when you buy a car because if you make less like if you make ninety thousand dollars you cannot afford a forty or fifty thousand dollar car ninety thousand or seventy thousand dollars you can afford maybe a twenty thousand dollar car which twenty thousand dollar cars in these day and price you can get a very nice car like a invest buick investor twenty three thousand dollar car beautiful car right but here's going to the third topic how, how fast can car depreciate well if you buy a buick investor right beautiful car for twenty three or twenty four thousand dollars in the first year it depreciates twenty percent which is astounding number 20 percent so you bought it at twenty three thousand. One year later it's worth around 18 to 17 thousand dollars right depends on how much mile you how much uh, miles you drive don't really matter average 20 percent and three years you would have lost 50 percent of the value so you buy in 23 thousand in three years it's only worth maybe eleven thousand or ten thousand dollars that is crazy drop in value right if you invest like if you buy like a twenty three thousand dollar car right and you invest it in s p 500 and, and like an annual rate of return of maybe seven percent right just the average in 30 years the twenty three thousand dollar car at uh, twenty three thousand and dollars will be worth around 1.2 million dollars that is crazy right in 30 years but you buy a car the car just depreciates in value and you don't get any money back but other than driving around and kind of whose fault is it well the government they actually silently promoted all the policies in the past to make you own a car in the future even now right and fourth topic my last topic owning a car is just a maintenance trap right if you own a car like a bmw and you don't really like service your car right you gotta get a service which is 200 dollars. if you don't get it serviced they have maintenance issues right you, it might be a uh, something with the ignition might go out transition might go out it costs too much money to repair and not counting like the insurance right and mercedes or bmw are pretty expensive even if you get a toyota you have to do your oil change every two or three months and also every thirteen thousand maybe uh, four uh, thirty or forty thousand i don't know exact number you have to get your tires change which is seven hundred dollars right and then you also get your air conditioning filter change which is another more money and if you have a flat tire you get the nails out $24 it's a constant string of uh, small costs maybe bigger costs when you own a car like maybe like especially if you own a old car one of my friend co-workers she own a uh, 2008 Jeep and she pay every two or three months $200 to $300 in maintenance something breaks down only an old car is more headache right and only a car only a car is just it's kind of like taking care of baby a lot of headache you got to take care of it if you don't take care of it the, the car breaks down right so only a car is the reason that Americans can't really save a lot of money right you got a uh, kind of you got like a long amount maybe 
seven hundred to eight hundred dollars on the car you pay the new years on it. On top of that, you also get expensive insurance, two hundred dollar. So it's nine hundred dollar down the drain. But don't forget the maintenance cost, one time oil change, um, cost usually forty dollars, right? And if you get a flat tire, another hundred or two hundred dollar per tire goes down the drain. And you you know who is to blame? I just wish uh, the U.S. government would prioritize building a great public transportation or building a subway system back in the 1950s where everyone just used the subway. Imagine you just pay $2 to go work and $2 to come back. Even if you travel five days a week, $2 one week. So it's $4 a day, right, to travel back and forth, forth round trip. Five days uh, is $20. And one, one month, is eighty dollars, maybe ninety dollars if you wanna go to somewhere weekend or a hundred dollar, compared to nine hundred to a thousand dollar per month of mortgage and insurance. Which would you pay? I mean, if you ever written the subway system, it's very very convenient in New York. They built up very very well, and I wish like Eisenhower back in the nineteen fifties where he focused all his energy. I'm building a great public system where the citizens of the United States does not need to own a car. That would be so much better. And you can easily save that $1,000 to buy a house, right? Buy something nice for you. Buy a refrigerator. Buy a TV to improve the quality of life. But that is not the case today. Everyone is basically have to own a car if you own a bicycle it's not gonna work you can't just ride your bicycle and so and downtown sunday to walmart right you have to get a car for groceries that is just my rent for the day only a car is just very very expensive and if you can buy a car that you can afford right depends on your annual income if you make hundred thousand dollars you can buy a thirty five thousand dollar car if you make seventy to sixty thousand buy twenty three thousand dollar car don't make the mistake i made buying a forty eight thousand dollar car well i cannot afford it now i'm doing like uber and lyft delivery to help pay for the car which is not good and but thankfully i'm pretty much finished paying it and after owning it uh for a couple of years, which is great. But uh, I gotta say, like driving a car is very convenient. You can go anywhere, anytime. You don't have to wait for anything. But is the cost really worth it? Like driving a gasoline car is bad for the environment. But if you ride the subway, you know, more people use the subway to go pe somewhere at once. It's better for the environment, right? I wish government would fund trains and stuff or bus or subways so that not every single citizen need to own a car what they can what what can they use that money for after they don't need to pay like car mortgage they can build the american dream they can use that to go college they can use that to get a better education they can use that to put a down payment of a house they can use that to remodel the house they always want to remodel the bathroom the quality of life does not decrease, right, if you don't own a car. Only if the government helps out, like, building a great public trans transportation for the citizens. That's just my opinion on it. Like, people maybe, oh, I like to own a car because it's convenient. And one thing is, like, if you make, like, $150,000 car, $1,000 annually, you can afford a car. But not everyone can make hundred fifty thousand dollars right when the minimum wage is about eight dollars per hour how do you afford house mortgage car insurance and maybe if you have a baby and food you can't afford all that all at once i'd rather take out the car payment you know go ride the subway if it's easier make life easier and don't want to live paycheck to paycheck 
Well, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. And my name is Calvin, and I'll see you guys next one.